All right, so I've seen a number of these videos in the trap community. So today I'm gonna to be presenting you the ultimate 808 guide for drum and bass and bass music. The 808 is a powerful tool in bass music and there's a number of techniques you can use to take it to the next level beyond its basic bass hit. In this video, we're gonna be starting with some basic techniques and then we'll be progressing with some intermediate and advanced level processes. And if you don't know already, my name is Stranger. Sometimes they call me the Rearranger, but I always bring the danger. All right, but enough cheesy lines. Comment down below and let me know what other basic techniques you'd like to learn. If you like 808s, then make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. It lets me know to create more videos like these. Also, follow me on TikTok and Instagram where I'm providing additional exclusive content. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, for this exercise, we can use a sampled 808 or a synthesized 808, but I'm gonna synthesize one with operator and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make a sound like this. As well, if you need to brush up on your synthesis, make sure you check out my video on the top five techniques on synthesis. As well, I have a couple videos on doing 808s, so check those out as well. But I have operator here and it's simply playing a sine wave. Now, if you're getting clicking, you can increase the attack by five milliseconds and release around 50 milliseconds. Then you don't get the clicking. All right, the first thing to do is to bring the sustain down so we get a bit of decay on the sound. Now that's looking more like an 808 where it starts loud and trails out. Okay, now you can play with the decay time if you want a shorter or longer 808. I'm gonna leave mine at four seconds. Next thing we wanna do is you can add some pitch modulation to create a bit of an attack on the 808. So enable the pitch envelope. And this is currently um, pitching it up by 12 and it has a quick decay. You can increase the decay time. So you get more of a drop bass sound, the longer the decay. Now you can increase the peak to like 24. So that's two octaves. But we want a hard attack. So quicker decay around 400 milliseconds or even quicker is good. I'm gonna leave it at 12 semitones. So notice how you have a kick now at the beginning of the 808. Without it, with. So that's a bit more punchy. Now going into the operator's waveform editor, just click on the first oscillator A and click on this oscillator button here. You can actually add additional harmonics to the 808. And this is especially useful for drum and bass when you want those audible harmonics. Now it's more than just sub bass. You have something audible. You can try the other ones. That's sounding dope. Very drum and bassy, for lack of better terms. Very cool. So a lot you can do with this waveform editor. And shouts out to my homie Quadrant who tipped me off on this trick. Of course, if you have serum, you can do this as well. So we're going to stick with that, that one. The next thing we can do to the 808 is adding some LFO modulation. Now by default, by increasing the amount, we're going to be increasing the pitch modulation. So you get that kind of wobbly, wonky jump up sound. Now over here, notice that we can disable the pitch modulation by clicking on this A button. So that turns it off. And now we can go into destination B and set LFO to modulate the volume of oscillator A instead. So now you get more of that old school jungle wobble. Sounding dope so far. 
By the way, shout out to the kind people at III who makes awesome headphones. They gifted me these awesome pair. They're the TMA2 Studio headphones and been really enjoying making music with these headphones. They sound really warm and tight and really enjoyable listening experience. So if you're interested, check them out in the link below. All right, let's put the sub into a pattern. Now I have some drums here. This is part of my new roller template. I'm still working on it, but stay posted. It will be available soon, but I have this pattern here where I can select the different snares. I like that one. Let's pitch that up by five and tighten it up. Okay, that's sounding good. Here's a bit of preview of my roller kit with some bass lines in the kit. So you can get some pretty cool results just by using the macro controls. I'm really excited to present you guys this template and it will be coming soon, so stay posted. All right, now to some patterns with the 808. Now, if you want to get a little more in depth in terms of some basic patterns for bass lines, definitely check out my video on bass lines as well. I have a Skillshare series on writing bass lines for beginners. So check that out as well down in the links below. But here's a couple basic patterns we can use with the 808. Let's write a dotted quarter note, which is like this, and then duplicate it. So that's a very common pattern used in drum and bass. Let's increase the complexity of this pattern by duplicating the pattern and moving the last note to a perfect fifth. Here's another popular one using quarter notes. And the last note, we go jump up an octave like that. Let's vary this pattern a little more, duplicate it. And then at the very end, let's add a minor third. Okay, let's keep going on. Let's write one more pattern here. This time we're gonna write an E and add a minor third. And then down like that. Okay, and then we are gonna duplicate this and then we're gonna add a perfect fifth up here for some variation. All right, we're getting into some jungle rhythms. All right, now we're gonna get into level two where we increase the techniques and processes. First one. Add some saturation to your 808. And depending on how much saturation you want, increase the drive. Use this bass parameter to impact how the low frequencies get driven. So higher values have a more distorted sound. All right, furthering the complexity of the process, group the operator. So now we have an instrument rack. Now we can pull another instrument such as Serum to add noise on top. And I created this noise in advance, but here's the noise on its own. So here's the noise of the 808 together. And then when you saturate the two signals, you get that warm, fuzzy sound. Here's the 
Here's another cool trick you can do with the noise. Bring the level all the way down and then add an LFO to the level of the noise. And then adjust the rate to taste. Super fast rates gives you that rapid sound and then slower rates will make it sound more wobbly. You can adjust the level up if you want. Oh yeah, that's sounding bad boy there. All right, we're on to level three, more advanced techniques. Now we're gonna do some multi-band processing. We can pull in my two-band split, which splits the signal between high and low. And if you need this rack, check it down in the links below. But basically, this allows us to distort or process the uh, top signal and then leave the bottom or the subs untouched so the subs uh, remain beefy. So just open up this section and then uh, on the highs I have a saturator here. Okay and then we could possibly add some reverb to the tops since it's only the tops we can afford to add reverb. And then we can add auto filter and then play with automating the cutoff of the top end. Of course, if you have a MIDI controller, you can map the filter cutoff to a knob and then you can do it live. get some pretty nasty results by doing that. By the way, if you want this entire effects rack with the filters and saturation, I'll leave that down in the link below as well. Lots of goodies for you guys today. And of course, everything we did there can be all done within one effect, specifically my favorite distortion plugin right now, Rift. So this will allow us to distort as well as add a filter on top. <laughs> And notice I'm using a bandpass filter, which gives us that awesome squeaky sound. And I'm adding riff only to the top band of this multi-band split. Awesome results. One really cool feature of Rift is its custom LFO editor. So if you pop up this window, there's a number of different shapes that you can choose from and we can create a sequence based on our 808 rhythm. So we can go high like this and then choose another shape on this section. And this time I'm gonna choose the triplets and I move gradually up like that. And then here's our sequence. And then let's play with some of the morphing filters. Nasty. So you can get some really cool and expressive results from this. Dope stuff. All right, so that was pretty much what I wanted to show you. I showed you the basics of creating an 808 with operator. You can replicate those techniques with other synthesizers as well. And then I showed you some intermediate as well as some advanced techniques to process your 808. Of course, I gave you a few tips on writing the patterns for the 808 for drum and bass as well. Of course, you can try this with other genres. Try it with dubstep or 140, 130 BPM. You'll get some interesting results. All right, hope you guys enjoyed watching various techniques to take your 808s to the next level. Remember, start with the basics and then gradually increase the difficulty adding more complex processes to your 808. By mastering these techniques, you'll be sure to bring the 808 danger. Anyways, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing, and I'll see you at the next 
video.